Welcome back to House TV Live. I'm Rick Spence, and with me today is Andrea Burridge with AXB Interiors out of beautiful Chicago. She does work all around the country, and this time we get a special treat. We're in Dana Point, California. What a beautiful home this is, Andrea. I can't wait to talk through it. Give me a little feel for this space. It was a fairly dramatic before and after. What was your sort of overall goal and aesthetic you were going for with this home? Well, when I first entered the home, I was uh, I felt the good bones of the structure, but the view of the ocean was uh, not in view as you walked into the space. So that was my primary goal is to open the space up and give you a better view of the showstopper here, which is the ocean. Give me a little feel for sort of the big material choices that had to be taken into account here. So what we decided on is keep everything light and neutral and let the ocean and the view be the show. And so all the materials were kind of left quiet so you could focus your eye on the sight line of the ocean. Almost a sandy vibe. Almost. Exactly. So we're looking at, you know, kind of beach tones and sand tones because they're from Chicago. They didn't want to go to a place where it reminded them anything other than California. So this is a Belgium hardwood white oak floor to the limestone on the fireplace. All of it was kept light for a reason, to keep it all light and kind of airy. You get a ton of natural light in here. Is that a... Uh... The nano wall? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it is. So um, it, that was also a decision because when we first walked into the home, there were smaller windows and one small door. And in order to create this kind of indoor-outdoor feeling, we had to open that whole space up. And so once we eliminated the wall, the expansiveness felt very, we were committed to that. So in order to do that, we had to create this wall, which when it is open, it is incredible. It's seamless out into the patio. It also creates this more of an indoor-outdoor space. Then you're like kind of in a fishbowl, right? So we had to create some privacy. We brought in some automated screens for the larger expanse of windows. The shades are also nice because when the sun sets and in the summer, it gets really hot in here. So it's also a great way to cut down the heat as well. Really nice. All right, let's, let's spend a little bit more time in the kitchen. We wanted to create a kitchen that was in plain sight, hide it, but have it there. And with creating more of a cabinetry, furniture cabinetry, so it was integrative in the space. Tell me about some of the materials, the, the long countertop that's behind you right now. Give me a little feel for the choice there and the scale that you went after in the space. So believe it or not, that was kind of an afterthought that um, we had created this wood and stone kind of countertop uh, island feel because we wanted part of it to feel like a, you know, just a normal countertop table area. But as we were kind of designing it, I thought, well, wouldn't this be cool if you could pull it out and create a community table? And so we talked to the cabinet fabricator and we designed it. And sure enough, we get this incredible, very useful space for the client that they use quite often for large parties. It can sit up to 20 and it pulls out very easily and separates from the countertop. It's pretty incredible. Beautiful. The, the, the cabinetry and the poles, I love your poles. Nice, beefy, very nice. Tell yeah. me a little bit about some of your finishing touches in the kitchen, which is just spectacular. Well, thank you. I honestly, hardware, cabinet hardware is one of my favorite things. And um, I use a company that does a lot of custom hardware. So when we, when we started with these colors of neutral and black and just kind of keep everything pretty quiet, when I saw this uh, pool, I asked them if they would make it in these two color combinations, which is like black with a uh, unlacquered brass. And I knew brass would do well in with the salt air. Uh, the shelves were all handmade by an iron artisan and they were brought in, they weigh a ton. And then on the on the stone on the back of that is again, a, lime, a printed limestone that we used to kind of keep it looking more, um, I don't know, it's again, sandy, has some texture, gives you a little texture to the area. Behind that, you've hidden some of the major appliances, right? Correct. Back kitchens are becoming more popular to kind of hide the functioning aspects of a kitchen. We created this screen, if you will, with this front uh, kitchen and then created a back kitchen. So what were some of the considerations when you are putting, you know, ovens, 
in on another wall in a, in another location were there uh, clearances that you really thought about and traffic patterns what was sort of the strategy when if you want to hide some of your appliance in this way so basically the back kitchen, which has the ovens, the warming drawer, the coffee machine, and kind of the storage area of the kitchen, it was more important to be hidden than to have it be right in front of everything else. The front part of the kitchen has all the day-to-day -day workings, the refrigerator, refrigerator drawers, the ice maker, the dishwasher, and the stove top. What was the exhaust considerations for cooking? So we had to use down drafts. We have two of them to make sure they exhaust efficiently. And actually it works beautifully and you don't have a hood. So you, what we are able to do is these beautiful shelves instead of a hood. Really nice. When you're near the fireplace, looking back at the kitchen, it's like a cabinet. It's like a little jewel box, right? Mm -hmm. And you elected not to go totally to the ceiling. Was that for the flow of light and, and aesthetics as well? And so you get that that bleeding from those skylights behind it? Exactly. And so when your eye, your eye doesn't stop at the top of that, it keeps on going. So it was kind of keep the whole thing kind of feeling open and free. We worked with a, uh, a architecture firm that the couple had worked with before, Persley Dixon out of Charlotte, North Carolina, and they created that visual. So it was a, it's a, it was a great idea. I love the great room in the kitchen and just naturally, now I've got to go to the dining area. It just has beautiful architectural elements along the top. You got the grass cloth. Tell me about this. This was interesting. When you originally walked in the home, this was a sunken atrium, actually about four feet down and you couldn't even see the ocean when you were sitting down there. So what we decided to do is bring the floor up so that, to keep it at the same level of the house, enclose it in glass. And the reason we did that is because her husband was looking for a place to work potentially when he was here. And a last minute ad was to add soundproof glass because this house was finished in March of 2020. So the husband worked in that atrium dining room area pretty much for five months. Really nice. So let's go through the design elements because it's casual but elevated design. Tell me what makes this work and why you did what you did here. Well, I think having skylights bring kind of an, uh, a lightness to the room that really was important. The wood flooring that was throughout the home added to the lightness. And then to add another kind of blue that brought the ocean, if you will, into this space, brought some kind of color and life to it. And then we, again, kept everything pretty neutral. So the table, the roundness of the table, I think the, uh, the light fixture that we chose, having it be really low profile and not distinct. So it's like a contrast of the elegance of a grass cloth and the beautiful cabinetry and the really pretty, you know, dining room table and chairs. And then the, the rug is more of a like a Moroccan feel, almost like, you know, kind of beachy, casual beachy vibe. When you do a remodel like this, so you've been in business about 20 years. Yeah. Um, maybe you know, a little more, but. Maybe a little, okay, maybe a little more. <laughs> uh, do, primarily in Chicago, but every now and then you, you sprinkle a job around the country. And when you do a home like this, how do you work with the homeowners to help visualize the space and give them the vision that they can trust you to then go execute it and then keeping everything on track and you're ordering supplies. And this was pretty significant because now you're doing a build, you've got architecture, you've got a lot of stuff happening, right? How did you keep organized and keep everybody on the same page and project managed? Did house play a role in this? Well, house has been transformational for my business. I realized I could do all of this remotely. And so my business has expanded nationally because the ability to show things visually for people. In fact, I'm working with a client right now in uh, Florida and I, I probably will never see that space physically. Right. <laughs> Until the end, until we're installing. And she's okay with it because I've done other projects for her out of state. And I was able to do that only because I was able to show her mood boards and floor plans and, and 3D floor plans and everything that House has to offer has been really amazing for me and my business.
That's awesome. Do we have time for one more space? You want to do the, the primary bedroom and bathroom? Sure. Let's go to the bedroom and tell me about this space. This has a very neutral, cozy, comfortable vibe to it, too. So when we are going through inspirational pictures on everything, right, the house, we are kind of thinking about how we want every room to look. And the client just kept on gravitating to their travels. They travel a lot. So they're one of the islands they love to go to is St. Bart's. And the St. Bart's vibe was kind of on her mind when she thought about this uh, bedroom. And so we found this amazing <laughs> Philip Jeffries wallpaper that's called St. Bart's. <laughs> And so I thought, well, why don't we start here? Because it's pretty fabulous. It kind of dictates the room. And it was able to keep everything low key again, but very like beachy chic. And then if you go into the bathroom, what we did is we resurfaced the face of those cabinets. Those are existing cabinets that we resurfaced the face. And then we put in new um, countertops, new flooring. And we took out the big jacuzzi that was in there and put a freestanding tub and kind of like updated the windows in there again. And we were able to get this kind of new light and airy space, which, you know, about half, the, we didn't have to completely gut the bathroom. And let's sneak this one in because everyone loves powder rooms. And this is just such a really cool one. I love the color and the vibe in here. Tell me about the powder room. I love powder rooms too, because they're like jewel boxes and you want people to have this element of surprise. They're so small, you can do something fabulous with them. So what we decided to do is tile the back of this wall with a chagrin looking tile. That was kind of the, the driver behind the whole design. And then we floated the sink and floated the mirror and added these, you know, kind of stunning pendants. And that's what all it took to make that powder room pretty cool. Yeah, really nice job. Well, I think you could turn any home into a, a beautiful home. So, Oh, thank you, Rick. <laughs> yeah, well, it's going to get you up to NorCal sometime and yeah. do some work up <laughs> anytime, here. Anytime, anytime. <laughs> well, I really appreciated this. I hope we get a chance to do this again. Congratulations on the space, Andrea, and uh, let's stay in touch. All right, thanks so much. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.